Okay. Um, I think after the panel discussion, it's now a great time to take a look at the real application of reinforcement learning. And our plan is to show you um, an example model that we, we did with collaboration with SkyMind. Um, and um, after I show you the model, um, Ty will show you the SkyMind, uh, SkyMind uh, intelligence layer or skill environment, and how you can leverage all the great functionalities that comes with it to train your simulation models in that environment. Then I come back and I show you our roadmap for AI integration with any logic. So just a recap of how we learn from simulation and how it is different from AI use case and how reinforcement learning uh, is, is going to be different. Uh, currently, a majority of you are uh, simulation modelers. We are building a model. We validate and verify it. And at the end, there will be a human being that interacts with that simulation models by running experiments. And most of these experiments are entailing running the simulation uh, several times, like Monte Carlo uh, experiment, optimization, um, compare runs, and things that you have already familiar with in simulation world. But at the end of the day, there is a human that learns from the simulation and extracts the information out of it and extends it, its uh, current mental model and change it or enhance what it knows about that subject. What we are going to do, the, 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 this paradigm shift is um, having an AI, this uh, learning agent or intelligent being uh, does the learning for you, so it will interact with the model and tries to learn something from it and, and tries to um, figure out how to take some actions based on the information that is already contained in the simulation model. And it is based on this reinforcement learning uh, framework that you've already seen. So um, it is similar to how humans um, learn. So you basically observe something, and based on what you saw, you take an action and you get a feedback from it, and that feedback is the reward you get from it. And then you correct your previous action, you try something else, and by going through that loop, eventually you learn something based on what your objective was. Okay. So let's jump into the example model. This is a traffic light example, and I will go through all the details, and our objective is to show you uh, almost all the important part of the code and the architecture, so you see how it could be simply done with any logic currently starting today. Um, and um, this is a collaboration between us, so me and Tyler from any logic, and uh, I, I want to thank uh, Chris Nicholson, CEO of uh, Scumwine, and also Ty uh, for supporting us in this project. So they let us collaborate with two of their world-class deep learning experts, Eduardo and Sam, and they helped us a lot with this example. Okay, so the model itself is uh, is a pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, road traffic library use. Uh, you have an intersection that cars are coming in from four directions and the objective of the training um, is to learn a policy that optimally controls this traffic light based on the current state of the traffic. So again, road traffic library and a traffic light that controls the intersection. Uh, what is interesting about this uh, intersection is it actually runs for eight hours from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, the interesting part is the arrival rate in each direction is going to be different over these uh, um, eight hours of uh, simulation. So in the east-west direction, um, you have uh, heavy traffic throughout the day. Uh, but in the north-south direction, you have light traffic in the morning up to 1 p.m., and then it starts to actually surpass the traffic rate in the other direction. So that's the challenge here to, in controlling this traffic light. Okay, so we, we, uh, we actually tested two architectures. We trained the entire, uh, we basically built the entire training from, uh, within inside in logic as an experiment, custom experiment, that I will go through in depth in the next slide. And we also exported um, any logic model. As you know, any logic professional lets you to export uh, all the libraries um, 
out of any logic and you can put it into another developing environment like an IDE or IntelliJ and do your coding there. So we, we tested both, uh, but I'm gonna focus on the first architecture. So the main thing is you have to import the um, the rein reinforcement learning uh, library. In this case, we used RL4J, which is uh, uh, the library that SkyMon supports. We have our model in any logic, and we have this custom experiment that, that has all the training algorithms in it. Um, and for some of you who are familiar with um, any logic experiment, we have lots of um, out of the box experiments like optimization, Monte Carlo, and so on. And we also have this custom experiment that lets you to um, man uh, by code control and have full control of how you want to execute your simulation. And that is what we used uh, for this training environment. Okay, so as I promised, I wanted to show you um, most of the important part of the code. So uh, you can see the entire thing. There is nothing uh, um, that, uh, that is hard here. It's pretty straightforward, actually. So the code uh, starts with some hyperparameters. These are the parameters that let you fine tune the, uh, the learning uh, algorithm and the network. Then you have the um, network configuration. And we use um, um, a simple uh, feed-forward network. It has 10 input uh, nodes, uh, two uh, hidden layers uh, uh, with 300 uh, neurons each, and we have an output layer with two uh, neurons. And what is actually you will see in the next slide, the inputs are the current state of the intersection, and it returns an action, what to do with the um, traffic light. Do we need to change the current phase of the, uh, um, the traffic light, or should we keep what it does right now? So this is uh, the network configuration. You can imagine this at the moment without the training as a brain that doesn't know what to do, but the, the neurons are there. So let's say now we gave this AI entity a kind of brain, so it, it, it is capable of learning. And the next thing is the training. Uh, uh, basically experiment. And you see that it has, we passed some information into it, and, and one part of it is the MDP, or Markov Decision Process, and, I, and it's an interface that we have to implement, and I will get to some of its uh, functions. But what this MDP does, it lets this um, artificial intelligence, or this brain, to learn from the simulation. Okay, so let's go through some of this. So this is the MDP, and I will focus on some of the functions that are more important. The first one is um, get observation. So, so far we gave a brain to this uh, intelligent being, so the, the second thing that it needs to do is it, it should be able to see the simulation, to somehow observe what the current state of the simulation is. And we have this intersection, and uh, believe it or not, even this simple intersection has lots of information in it. The location of the car's speed and everything that is going on. So we, we had to somehow um, compress that information into a form of like an array with 10 numbers. So basically with 10 numbers, we are communicating what is happening in this intersection. And those 10 numbers are, the, uh, are based on what I'm showing on the slide. So you see that we separated this intersection into nine zones. And each, in each zone, we ask the cars that are there how, how much time you've spent so far in this zone. And that number becomes the value that we have as an element in this array. And the tenth element is the current phase of the traffic light. And it's a value between zero to uh, three. We have four phases, two yellow lights and the other two. Okay, so now our AI has a brain. It can see the simulation. Uh, the next thing is um, the reset uh, function. And reset function is, as you know, it has to try and learn from running the simulation over and over again. Actually, we ran it for a thousand times. And uh, to be able to do that, it has to reset the, the learning environment, or the simulation in this case. So the code here just sets up a new engine and, and initializes it with some parameters, some initial parameters, so it's ready to go. That's the reset function. And lastly, it, we have this a step function that um, lets this AI to take an action based on what it sees. So if we have the neural network, it can see it. So this is basically the code uh, 
in plain English. So what it does, it looks into the current state of the intersection, it gets those 10 numbers, um, it takes the action that it thinks is the best or like what, what you've learned so far, and the action is either do nothing or change the face. So if you are in a green, you will go to, um, to red, if you are red, you go to um, green, and if you are yellow, it basically doesn't do anything. Um, and okay, so it, it, it looked at it, it took an action, it, it, it runs the simulation for 10 seconds, and it looks at it again. And then it compares what happened in that 10 seconds based on its action. And based on that comparison, it gets a reward. And so you can read the reward function. We don't have time to get through the details, but it's based on how much time it saved for, um, for those cars that were in the intersection and then the entire roads. Um, and it gets a reward between minus one to one. And, and negative ones basically are some form of punishment. Um, okay, so we trained this, uh, by using this setup, we ran the simulation a thousand times, and um, um, we trained a policy. To be able to see how this policy actually works, uh, we put it back into the simulation, and now you will see that simulation running with this trained policy. To be able to compare it with something meaningful, we ran an optimization um, experiment as well as a baseline of like what, what we can do best right now with the current uh, other experiments and to see what is going on. So this is the demonstration of that. Um, on the left, you see the optimized version of the model with the optimum values for north, south, and east, west. So on top of this, you see the uh, green phase length. Uh, so you see for the optimized value, we had to basically come up with some numbers, 90 seconds for north, south, and 110 for east, west, and we stick with those numbers. These are fixed values. But on the right side, you see the policy based on the current state of the traffic changes how long the green phase light should be. So currently, we are in the morning, um, and uh, uh, if you remember, the, the, the heavy traffic was only in the east-west side. So it gives them lots of uh, priority over the other side. So it clearly understands that it doesn't need to give green light to the north-west uh, side. And um, so we are still in the morning, so you see the clock, we're at 11 a.m. Um, so when it gets to 1 p.m., that's when the traffic hits in the north-south north, uh, side. Um, Site uh, and the the main measurement to to compare them is the mean time in system. Um, as you can see so far, is almost double in the optimized version. Just remember, this is not just a random scenario; it's an optimized value. So it's uh, it's definitely like saved us a lot of time so far on average here. So we are close uh, to 1 p.m. and when when that hits, just follow uh, the top green phase length uh, on the uh, top right corner. So you see that at 1 p.m. starts to adapt itself based on the traffic that comes from the uh, north side, uh, north south uh, side of this intersection. So now we are at one. So you see that this uh, blue line, which shows you how much time it gives to north south uh, direction is going to change. So it starts to adapt itself. Um, and as you run this model, so I will show you the end of the simulation in the next slide. But another measurement that you can take a look at is the distribution of the speed of the cars. It clearly shows that specifically for east-west cars, um, the distribution is skewed toward right in the policy version, shows that they, they, they were able to pass through the intersection faster. Okay, so this is the end result of that, and you clearly see how adaptive it is compared to the optimal values that is constant. So in real cases, in real systems, we usually deal with dynamic stochastic systems, so it is natural to, to imagine that optimizations that are coming up with optimum fixed input parameters, in theory, usually uh, uh, underperform compared to policies that can be imagined as optimal decisions over time, or near optimal. Um, there are some things that you should keep in mind. Um, there are uh, some decision points or 
um, part of the deep, learn, uh, deep reinforcement learning that is an art, how you set up your hyperparameters, the obs observation space, how you set it up, the action space, and the reward system you heard uh, uh, from that excellence. Uh, you heard that in the panel discussion as well. So these are not all uh, clear, uh, very standard things. You have to figure them out and try different scenarios to make it work. Uh, and um, you might be interested to see how we can use it. There are different uses now and in the future. You can implement them into uh, adaptive autonomous uh, type of equipment and tools. And there are lots of edge devices and new uh, small computers that you can put these trained policies on them. And they are capable of running these uh, trained brains, basically. And you can use them as controllers for different types of uh, cases. Okay, so now Ty is going to show you the SkyMind uh, um, skill environment, and this is an environment that we also tested based on the same uh, model by exporting the AnyLogic models, and Ty will show you how you can use all the functionality that comes with this uh, environment to take your training experiment to the next level. Great, thank you. Oh, I just need to click again. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, thank you very much for AnyLogic for inviting us. Uh, we're here to really create the vision of combining reinforcement learning into your existing any logic environment. Uh, so we're here because we've done things like deep learning for Java, DL4J, reinforcement learning for Java, which is RL4J. Uh, what I wanted to do is just explain to you what we did to give you some answers as to how the, you can do things now, but hopefully actually generate some more questions about how this is impactful to you and what you do. Uh, so just a, a little bit of, of what, what's happening in the background and uh, share some of the themes of, of what we're trying to do. So the first thing that we did was to export the files uh, out of any logic into a format that we can do some training uh, in, the, uh, in the SkyMine environment. So the plan in working with any logic is to figure out how to seamlessly use existing models and to seamlessly work in your, in your user experience. Um, as Andre pointed out, uh, if you want, um, uh, control and performance, you do it in Java. If you want speed, you do maybe think about things like Python. Uh, we are Java people, and part of the reason why we're doing the partnership with AnyLogic is you all are Java people. And what we've learned is that a lot of the existing uh, work that's out there with data scientists is combining business problems into math and into code. And we see there is a lot of code out there in the world in Java, and we want to meld that with uh, the new code that's coming out with things like Python. But it, inherently, within the SkyMind intelligence layer, our, our commercial product on top of our open source is the idea of exporting JAR files, which you are familiar, and putting them into experiments. So just like you do experiments in any logic, we have experiments in our environment. And that's a, an integration that we've already done and it's available today. In, in our world, where we work with a lot of machine learning and deep learning engineers, they use things like Zeppelin notebooks, Jupyter notebooks. So there will be a time where we think that the two worlds will coexist, and we'll let it all figure out, uh, work with you all to figure out how best that works. But we've imported the, the experiment into our environment, and then we're able to actually do the training uh, in a distributed environment, and to be able to, to take advantage of things like uh, NVIDIA GPUs for for uh, distributed training and compute. So that's all built into our product. And then we also provide uh, analytics. So as I think the panel has talked about, with reinforcement learning, you do a lot of parallel training, and then you do a lot of distributed training. And that's something that we've already done in our, in our product in the history of our, our company. Uh, the other thing that we've done is uh, get ready to use the workflow. So one of the things we want to work with Andy Logic is what makes the best uh, sense when it comes to workflows, right? How do you combine simulation with reinforcement learning? But we have workflows built in our product so that you can take advantage of things that's already out there in the machine learning world uh, automatically. Uh, we do believe that it's gonna be a multiple language uh, environment, uh, as we talked about before. Java is a first class citizen, but we also support things like Python. You may be working in a world where somebody's building TensorFlow or Keras models, and how do you actually uh, you work in an environment that's unified, so that's something that we provide. The one thing that, uh, that I've been talking to a lot of people about here is around edge devices and endpoints. So we do see a world where a lot of the model training is actually happening on the edge, whether it be on equipment, on sensors, on wearables, 
So how do you actually take some of that information, that edge information to the central point? We also do a lot of work with robotic process automation companies, UiPath Automation Interware is probably the two of the companies out there. So we do see a world where you may need to start combining a lot of these workflows into one environment with simulation as, as, as one of the core decision-making tools, but we've already integrated that into, into our environment. And then one of the things that we see is a lot of need for model history and rollback. So there will be a time where we want to start testing hypotheses and start tracking it, and that's something that we built into skill. Uh, I won't talk about this at a very heavy length, but our vision is that there will be a, a time when all kinds of data will be accessible to you, and you may want to figure out how to best use time series data, simulation data, actual data, and then feed a central learning platform. So whether that's uh, simulation, whether that's something else, you know, how do you actually have one central learning platform for which to make decisions? So the reason why we're here is that we think that simulation has an incredible power to make those decisions using business uh, decisions into models. So still figuring it out. So one of the things that we want to do uh, together is ask the right questions and then figure out what's the best way to get started. Um, at my previous company, Twilio, we used to have this concept of a doer. That's a person that wants to do something. So we want to work with doers. So please go on to skymind.ai slash any logic, put in the contact form, and then we'll get you access, uh, early access to what we've already built. And then we'll go from there. Thank you, Ty. So I'm going to skip these two and jump into the uh, AnyLogic um, AI integration roadmap. Um, so, so I'm sure that uh, some of you, uh, after seeing these examples and, uh, and the panel discussion, are interested to try this on your own. So the first thing is um, DL4j, RL4j libraries are available. These are open source libraries that SkyMind supports, so you can use them today. Um, also, ski learning and AnyLogic, are, are, uh, we were tested it, so they are working together if you need a more like a, um, a professional environment to train your models, you can uh, go to the link that uh, Ty showed, so that's, that they are available today. The next thing would be um, on June, uh, we are going to publish um, these examples that I just showed with all the codes and instructions. It's either going to be in written format or a video tutorial. So if you are interested to try it on your own, everything will be available to you. Um, and we also, for our, for our um, cloud platform, we are going to make our Java API RL ready so it will be able to take control of the simulation and uh, does uh, and pass information and take actions. In summer, we will um, release our Python API that is capable of doing the same thing so you can use other platforms like uh, other uh, frameworks in Python. Um, in fall, with collaboration with Skill, uh, with, uh, with uh, SkyMind, and uh, add, we are going to add more state-of-the-art algorithm and architectures inside Skill. So if you wanted to try cutting-edge uh, new architectures, uh, you can do that as well without uh, doing much code. So everything will be implemented in that environment for you. And we also have a plan for publishing some form of book or uh, instructional document uh, with, with several examples by, by the end of the year. So if you are interested in collaborating on that, we are we, we'll be more than happy. And some long-term goals would be um, AnyLogic Python integration, AnyLogic 9, and uh, we also thinking about putting some out-of-the-box experiments in the cloud. So you can just set an experiment which will be reinforcement learning and train it uh, out of the box, and um, we're also going to change some of our example models in a way that they are reinforcement learning ready, so you can use them as example models, and uh, we're also exploring integration with other platforms that are out there. So in summary, our purpose is to uh, make sure that you have access to the latest and greatest uh, reinforcement learning technologies uh, in a simple, intuitive way. Thank you, and we are ready to answer your questions. <laughs> oh, 
Hello, hi. Um, so it looked like just then that you can today export an AnyLogic model and use it in the skill environment. Is that right? Yes. And yes. That, does that include all open source data science Python libraries? It also has open source libraries, but the way that we are using it now is with RL4J, which is in Java, in skill. But later on, it will be available with Python as well. So today is a manual process, so we're looking to automate the integration between any logic and SkyMind, but it is possible today. So what you saw today is possible today. And what we do, if you're talking about machine learning uh, libraries, we integrate a lot of that into our tools so that you don't have to deal with it. things like TensorFlow and Keras models. OK, that's really awesome. Are there going to be example models published pretty soon? So yeah, so you can go to the, um, so those examples will in the works. But for, if you need more information about the skill environment, just go to the link in and uh, we will contact you later with yeah. more information about that, so how you can install it and start using it. SkyMind.ai slash any logic. Or come okay. see me or Chris. Yeah. Great, thank Early you. access, we want, we want feedback, so this is, this is why we're here, is that we want to make simulation, adding reinforcement learning easy. Uh, two questions about the uh, traffic example that you showed us. Uh, the first question is, what constrained uh, the optimization algorithm from reaching the solution uh, that the uh, machine learning algorithm uh, reached? And the other question um, is, from computational time point of view, uh, how are they compared to each other? So uh, definitely optimization is faster. Uh, uh, because in, in, in the uh, training environment, you have to pass information back and forth between the training algorithm. Um, but uh, the constraint that we use, the optimization is just a simple uh, objective function without, I don't think we, it had any specific constraint with just m minimizing the average time in system. Um, and the reason that it, the policy works better is because it adapts itself, but the optimization just comes with two numbers and it has to stay with those numbers over the eight hours of operation. So it cannot adapt itself. So basically, you're working with averages somehow there. So, Thank you. Hi. Um, with the, uh, the AnyLogic model where you were training doing the um, reinforcement learning, were you using ND4J with that as well? Or is it just uh, RL4J? Uh, so ND4J typically, I don't think it's used in that particular one, but we can, we typically use ND4J for things like uh, distributed training. Mm -hmm. So it's all integrated into what we do within Skill. Okay. So I'm guessing like RL4J underneath probably uses some of the technologies that are there, maybe not the entire library, but it, use, it does train this uh, network, so it probably uses those matrices. And then how did you choose your hyperparameters? So I, uh, so it was the collaboration with the SkyMind. So Sam helped us with finding the correct hyperparameters, but it based on mostly, uh, so the, the way that we approach it, we look into previous research in that, and majority of our setting came from a, a study from University of Tennessee, it's a paper. So we look into their reward function, their setting, and we get lots of ideas from that. So yeah, we started from that, but we have experts that are very familiar with those, and we try different iterations to come up with the best one that we showed today. So the, we have uh, SkyMind engineers maintaining a lot of these open source libraries, so you can always count on us to do the latest and greatest. So Sam maintains RL4J. We maintain DL4J. Uh, the second largest contributor to Google's TensorFlow is one of our engineers. So we are keeping track of things. I think, um, sorry, right here. I, I think you already answered part of my question, but my question was about the policy and um, how you choose the policy. Because a couple of years ago, I did something um, not this uh, complicated, but something similar in NetLogo, and I used the game theory um, idea, actually. And I, I was just wondering what type of policy you use in the traffic model and if it is, um, I mean, customer can uh, modify it 
um, is there like different types of a strategy for the policy? So, so the policy is learned by this learned. neural network. We didn't set any specific rules for it. We just set up uh, how it can, what it sees from, what kind of information it can observe from the simulation and what kind of actions it can take. So it had these two basically levers to, to work with and it learned the policy on its own. We didn't try to guide it in any form. Yeah, so yeah, that, that is the important point. It is a, a policy that's generated by learning with the right reward functions and hyperparameters, but it was a policy that was generated by, by learning. So. Okay, we're in between lunch. <laughs> Thank you.